gonna fade away We're the free We are the free Yours is the glory
Come on, give him your praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, put your hands together. It's good to be in the house of the Lord today. I'm so glad to be here. Oh, thank you, Lord. Everybody lift it up and sing. I am chosen. I am chosen. I am free. I am living for eternity. Free now forever. Picks me up. Turn me around. You place my feet on the solid ground. Yours now forever. Oh, sing it out. Nothing's gonna hold. A brand new day, free now forever. Only I approach your throne to claim this crown as Christ my own. Yours now forever, and nothing's gonna hold me back. And nothing's gonna. Oh, come on, just shout that out. And nothing's gonna hold me. No, nothing, nothing's gonna hold me back. My chains fell off. My chains fell off. My heart was free. I'm so glad, Lord. I'm alive to live for you. I'm alive to live for you. Oh, oh. Amazing love, how can it be? Cause Lord, you gave. You gave everything for me. You gave everything for me. Every Give him 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Are you glad to be in the house of God today? How many of you ready to get free in the presence of the Lord today? Are you ready to shake off those heavy bands? Are you ready to be free in the presence of God? Amen. I'm going to mess them up this morning. They were about to go into worship, but I feel like there's freedom in the house. And for those who aren't free, this is going to be your chance to get free. Somebody say amen. Father, we bless you today. We thank you that he who the Son has made free, well, he's free indeed today. We, we proclaim freedom in this house. Every guest, every, every covenant partner, every boy, every girl, every man, every woman, you have made us free. And God, we're going to celebrate freedom today. We shake off the bands that hold us down. We, we, we break the chains that hold us back. And today we'll be freed in the presence of the Lord. Come on, let's play. No more shackles and no more chains. No more bodies. I am free. Yeah, yeah. Oh, if you're free in the house, I just want you to say no more shackles. No more bondage, I am free. Yeah. Oh, I don't believe that you understand what I'm saying. No more shackles and no more chains. No more bondage, I am free. Yeah. Yeah. If you're free, I want you to dance and sing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Risen for me, I'm glory bound. My Jesus to see glory to God. He said, Come on, you sing. sing. He set me free, He set me free. He broke the bonds of prison for me. I'm glory bound. My Jesus to see glory to God. He set me free, He set me free, He set me free. He broke the bonds of prison for me. I'm glory bound. To see glory to God, He set me free. You see, He set me free. He set me free. He broke the bonds of prison for me. I'm glory bound, my Jesus. To see glory to God, He set me free. Yeah, yes. Oh, how many of you believe it? That who the sons make free is free indeed. I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. I believe who the sun sets free is free indeed, and there ain't no chains that can hinder me. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Oh, you sing, who the sun sets free.
Who's free in this place this morning? You know, a lot of people quote that scripture. I believe I've mentioned this to you, but I was reading that scripture one day. The Bible says, he who the Son has made free is free indeed. And I always quoted it and heard it quoted, he who the Son sets free is free indeed. How many of you heard it like that? I was reading it one day and the Lord checked my spirit. He said, son, you don't say he who the Son is set free because when you set something free, that means you can capture it again. He said, but if you make something free, once you make it free, it has no tendency to come back into captivity. It doesn't remember what it was like to be in captivity. Because when you make something, you create it brand new. Oh, y'all didn't hear what I'm saying. See, that's the problem with Christians is we get set free. And we stay set free for about three or four months. But we didn't deal with the thoughts. We didn't deal with those things that got attached to us when we were in the cage. We need to be made free. That means our mind's different, our heart's different, our attitude's different. Are you here? Because see, you get bound up when you begin to think about your problems. Are y'all here? When you get begin to think and allow your mind to think on things that are not good, next thing you know, you're, ca- you're in captivity again. Somebody say amen. But when you learn to think about Jesus... Y'all ain't hearing me this morning. When you learn to put your mind on who He is and not who you are, on what He can do and not what you can do, on what He has said and not what your banker says or your government says or your situation says, when you get to thinking about Jesus, all of a sudden you get a little tap in your foot, you get a little dance in your step, you get a little hop. Somebody say amen. Then all of a sudden... You'll begin to clap and not just look at those others clapping around you. Somebody say amen. So we got to get our minds thinking about Him. Because He's the beginning and the end. He's the Alpha and the Omega. He's the first and the last. He's the answer to your prayer. Somebody say amen. Are you ready to get your mind on Him? Can we do one more praise song before we go any further? I don't know about you, but I got a lot to praise Him for. I got a lot to thank Him for. He's been good to me. He's never left me. He's never forsaken me. He's never left me in the middle of trial. When I've messed my life up, He comes in and rescues me every time. Come on, let's think about Him. Let's praise Him. And what He's done for me when I think of His goodness and how He set me free. I want to jump, 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 jump all night, all day, all night. When I think of His goodness and what He's done for me, when I think of His goodness and how He set me free, I wanna praise, 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 praise all night, all day, all day, all night, all day, and all night, all day, all night, all day. So when I think of His goodness and what He's done for me, when I think of His goodness. And how he set me free, I want to shout, 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 shout all night, all day, all night, all day, all night, all day, all night, all day. And when I think of his goodness, and how he top of me, when I think of his goodness, and how he set me free, I want to sing, 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 sing all night. All day, all night, all day, all
goodness what he's done for me when I think of his goodness how he set me free I want to dance 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 all night all day all night all day when I think about the goodness of God and how he set me free when I think of his goodness all he's done for me I want to shout Woo! all night all day all night all day when i think of his goodness what he's done for me when i think of his goodness and how he set me free i want to clap 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 all night all day all night all day and when i think of his goodness and what he's done for me when i think of his goodness and how he set me free i want to praise praise yes yes Just play it, just play it. You give him praise, I say play. Let's go. Come on, praise him, praise him. You got to dance your way out. You got to praise your way out. Hallelujah. When I think of his goodness, what he's done for me, when I think of his goodness, and how he set me free, I want to preach, 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 preach. Come on, give him praise. Come on, give him praise. Praise him from your soul. Praise him from your spirit. Somebody get free. Somebody get free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah! 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 Yes! 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 Has he saved anybody? Has he filled anybody? Y'all people crazy. I said, y'all people crazy. You say, what in the world's happened? Trying to teach you something. All you got to do to obtain your victory is change your mindset. Stop seeing yourself as a victim and see yourself as a victor. Start seeing your stop seeing yourself as less than and see yourself more than. Stop seeing yourself by the things that this world says you are and pick up your Bible and find out what it says who you are and start living out of that. Come on somebody. Isn't that right? I say let freedom be in the house. Amen. I said let freedom be in the house. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. 
<laughs> I heard the Holy Ghost say Covenant Connections Church has scored a touchdown. Now y'all don't know what that means, but when I got my season tickets to the Georgia game, I go to the Georgia game. When we score a touchdown, those people will start going crazy. 92,000 people going crazy because of a, a score that's not going to matter at all in a week. But they get so excited because somebody was victorious. And they'll go to a TV timeout and the people still screaming and yelling. They'll take a 10 minute break and you can't shut the people up. Because they're so excited that somebody scored. Well, I'm here to tell you, 2,000 years ago, somebody scored. His name was Jesus. His name is Jesus. And three days after they put him in the tomb, he come out and spiked the ball and said, it's good. Touchdown for heaven. And the same victory he has, you have today because you're sons and daughters of the king. Everybody just spike the ball. Come on, spike it like you mean it. What's that old guy that spikes the ball? Joel. And then he does a little salsa dance. What's that guy's name? Where's Joel at? He knows who he is. Brother Cruz, Victor Cruz. Every time he scores, he spikes the ball and he does a little, little dance. That's the problem with us Christians is we, we, we got too sophisticated to do our touchdown dance. I know it's Sunday morning, but that's all right. You got too sophisticated to do your touchdown dance. So we're going to give you one more shot to do your touchdown dance. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? When I think of His goodness, what He's done for me, when I think of His goodness, and how he set me free. I want to dance. Dance dance dance, 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 dance all night. All night. All day. All night. All day. All day. When I think of his goodness, what he's done for me, when I think of his goodness, and how he set me free, I want to dance. dance, dance I want to do my victory dance. Night, my touchdown dance. Night, I want to spike the ball. It's good. Come on, praise Him. So when I think of His goodness and what He's done for me, when I think of His goodness and how He set me free, I want to dance, 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 dance all night, all day, all night. Just play it, just play it. Come on, dance. Praise Him in the dance. Y'all ain't praising it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You say, Pastor, why you dance? I dance just to let all hell know that everything is under my feet. Every power, every principality, every trouble, every situation is under my feet. Stomp your foot one time. Stomp your foot one time. Everything that comes against you is under your foot. Stomp your foot one more time. Everything that you shall come against and face is under your foot. I told him a long time ago, I said, you ought to write, go home and write devil on the soles of your feet. And every time he starts lying to you, pick your shoe up, look at the bottom of it, and remember that that's where he belongs, not on your shoulder, but under your foot. Stomp your foot. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Shout, he's under my feet. Isn't he under your feet? Amen. You say, Pastor, why don't you just go on? Well, some people that's got their victory this morning been fighting for a long time to get this. And so, so we don't want to rush their praise. Somebody say amen. I don't want to rush their praise. God is good. You say, well, I, I don't understand why y'all clapping and dancing and screaming and and all this stuff. Y'all acting crazy. You don't understand. Somebody say amen. But I used to go to the bars and the dance halls and I'd dance till my clothes was wringing wet with sweat. Hair all messed up. And I was dancing for a defeated devil. A defeated life. I'd go home, lay in my bed miserable. Wake up in the morning and my dance didn't deliver me. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing. I was still miserable. My dance is still the same. But my partner changed. Oh, I, I said my dance is still the same. But my partner changed. Now I lay my head down at night and I'm happy. I wake up in the morning and I'm full of joy. I get up in the morning excited about what God's going to do in my life. Yes, yes. Stomp your foot. That's where he is. That's where he is. Under your foot. <laughs> That's all right. How many has changed partners? Have you changed partners, Big D? <laughs> well, glory. God's good, amen. Well, glory. Father, we love you. Yeah, I hear you, Holy Ghost. I want to I want to pray for somebody real quick. Give me our prayer and altar workers up here at the front if you would. I uh, I want to pray for some people just real quick before we go before we go further. And and I don't want you to do this just because I'm calling this out. I want you to be honest. I haven't slept in 3 or 4 nights. I mean just Maybe even a week. I just, the enemy is, just stole my peace and my sleep. Last night I was up all night long. Just, you ever have one of those nights where you're just up all, and you're just miserable? Just like, dear God, can I just rest? We were, we were in bed last night about 1.30, 2.30 this morning. The TV in the living room just cuts on. Blaring. Just cuts on. Ain't nobody in there. And I said, well, maybe because we got another a new TV with a remote. And I told Stephanie, I said, well, maybe the TV had an alarm on it that we didn't know about. And it was scheduled for like 2.30 and just went off. I tried justifying it, you know. I mean, that sounds a lot better than a devil come in our house and decided he'd watch... ESPN but either way I believe it's a a thieving devil <laughs> that wants to steal your peace the psalmist said I will lay me down and sleep in peace he said that our God gives blesses his children with sleep and I walked in this morning and I told Pastor Jerry, I said, man, I, well, I've been having trouble sleeping. He said, you know what, Pastor, the past few nights I've been up all night. And so before we go further, I, when he said that, it confirmed in my spirit. There may be just one or two, I don't know. It may just be me and you. 
But if any, anybody in here says, you know what, I, I just, the last few days, I just haven't been sleeping well. Just feel like I, I, I this, this, just hadn't been resting. The Bible says it's vain for you to stay up late and wake up early to, toiling over the cares of this life. It's vain. Doesn't do any good. God wants us when we lay down to sleep. Amen? You watching my live church, maybe, maybe you haven't been sleeping well. Chat in right now. Let us know. We want to pray with you. But you say, Pastor, I, my, my peace has been threatened. It's been attacked. I want you to get out of your seat. I want you to come and stand in, one of the, in front of one of, these, uh, one of these prayer and altar workers. And if you're a prayer and altar worker and you, you, you've been doing that, then just turn around and let somebody pray with you. Amen. You don't have to be guy with guy. You can be girl with guy and stuff like that. We... We ain't, we ain't gonna we will make sure you all right and protected amen you need prayer you need prayer I need I need two more three more four more give me some staff members some elders whoever come I need a man here Anita you got pastor Jerry come here right here You watching my live church, just wherever you're at, if you can, just lift your hands. I'm going to pray for you. I pray, I believe that the victory that we're, we're, we're feeling in this place today has come because we've paid a price. Our peace has been threatened. But we've got the victory today. We're overcomers. We're more than conquerors. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for everyone that is standing in this altar. I pray for everyone watching by live church right now that the enemy has threatened their peace. Father, in the name of Jesus, I say that this season is over. I say that this attack, this spiritual attack to destroy our peace is over. And in the name of Jesus, be filled with the presence of God today. I pray in the name of Jesus that peace come to your mind and to your spirit. Peace come to your heart right now. I speak peace into your homes. Devil, you have no right to attack our homes. Our homes are the safe haven of God. Our homes are guarded by the angels of God. We cancel your assignment. Holy Spirit, breath of God, fill your people now. Fill your people now. Fill your people now. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless you, Jesus. If you're in this place and you're not 100% sure if you died today, you'd go to heaven. If you're not born again, if you need a Savior, get out of the altar. Come quickly. The peace of God is at... Or get out of your seat. Come to this altar. The peace of God is here. You're not promised tomorrow. The Bible says your life's like a vapor. Here one minute and gone the next. The love of God and the forgiveness of God is in this place. It has entered this place. Don't miss your moment. You're backslidden on God. Get down to this altar right now. If you've never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, get down to this altar right now. You know you got things in your life. Christian, I'm speaking to you. You know you got things in your life that God's been dealing with you. 
Get to this altar right now before we go any further. Get to this altar quickly. Don't miss the moment of God. The forgiveness of God. The joy of the Holy Spirit is in this place. Before we close these altars, anyone in this room, check your heart right now. Check your heart right now. And if you're not completely head over heels in love with Jesus and you got things in your life that you need to repent of, listen, I still believe in repentance. I still believe that there should be an altar of repentance in the house of God. Repentance is not a bad thing. You say, well, what will people think about me? Listen, we all have to repent. Every day we have to repent. But Covenant Connection Church, we need every covenant partner of this house chasing after the face of God like never before. We can't back up. We can't slow down. This is the time where we got to chase Him. Get to this altar quickly. Hurry before we close this altar. Come and meet with one of these prayer and altar workers. Let them pray with you. Let them agree with you. Come quickly. Today is the day. Today is the day. I hear that in my spirit. Today is the day. Today is the day. Hallelujah. Come on, let's just worship Him as people's lives are being totally altered this morning. This is church. This is church. This is church. This is why we gather. Not a social club. Not a human agenda. But to, have in, to set an atmosphere to have an encounter with the presence of God. Father, we thank you that you're in this place. You're watching by live church right now. It's, it's very important we hear from you. We know you're out there, but it's important we hear from you. Chat in right now. Miss Susan's there at the, at the computer. She's waiting to hear from you. She'll send us your prayer requests, your praise reports. Let us know what we can pray with you about. Come on, let's just worship Him another minute. Father, we bless You today. We bless You today, Holy Spirit. You're wonderful in this place. You're wonderful in this place. Hallelujah. 
Right now we pray for healing over Jay. Watching by live church right now, Jay. We speak healing over your body in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray for a job for a husband right now in the name of Jesus. We pray open doors to you. We pray open doors to you. Father, I pray a job release into his life. Your word says your gift, our gifts bring us before great men and kings. I pray that over his life in the name of Jesus. Father, we bless you, we bless you, we bless you, we bless you. Hallelujah. Ashley is on live church with us. She asked us to pray for understanding. She has a heavy heart this morning. Which is exactly what I was going to preach on today. Understanding. We pray for Ashley in the name of Jesus. More prayers for jobs, better jobs. We release blessings upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray income to you. The Bible says that the gift of God is for a man or a woman to enjoy the benefit of their labor. We speak that over your life in Jesus' name. Let's just take another minute or two just to worship God as people are still praying.
bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. I hear the Holy Spirit saying He's equipping this body. Today He's equipping this house for the assignment that's in front of us. He's equipping us. I know this is different. I know it's different. But the least of things that we need is another structured Christian environment. We believe in teaching. We believe in preaching. We believe in equipping with the Word of God. But there's nothing that can equip you better, faster, and more thoroughly than an encounter with the presence of God. I mean, believe that. Let Him equip you today. Father, we bless You. We thank You for Your Spirit that is in this house. We thank You for everything that You've done, everything that You're doing. We proclaim victory over every, every person in this place. Victory today. We're thoroughly equipped to do what you've called us to do. We're able ministers of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We go forth today as soldiers. We take this city, we take this region for the Lord Jesus Christ. For what you've called us to do, how you've called us to do it. We use the weapons that you've given us. We, we use our personalities, our gifts, our call. Thank God for everybody else. Thank God for all the other works and ministries. We bless them. But God, we're comfortable in our own skin. To do what you've created us to do. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. Amen. Can you give the Lord a great big hand clap of praise this morning? Come on, thank Him for what He's done. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, hallelujah. Thank you. Thank 
you, Lord. Thank you. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. In Jesus' name. Everybody say amen. Amen. As you find your seats this morning. Glory to God forever. Glory to God forever and ever and ever and ever. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Isn't God wonderful? You're not a normal soldier. You're not status quo. The hand of God on your life is not for you to be an average Christian. That's why when others, other Christians act a certain way, do a certain thing, they can, they can do it. They can talk a certain way and act a certain way, but when you do it, it, it convicts your heart. You understand what I'm saying? And it's because you're not average. God's got greater things for you. And that's why the Holy Spirit convicts you and He, he draws you closer to Him. You understand what I'm saying? Today's a new day. Today's new. The hand of God is upon you. Amen. Isn't God wonderful? Well, I'm not going to preach a message today, but I do want to. I do want to. Can you guys lower that just real quick so people online can see what I refer to? Lord laid a few weeks ago on my heart the term rise up. I believe God's equipping us today to rise up. Somebody say amen. I know that for since 2010 that's been the the slogan, the mindset of the Atlanta Falcons. Our beloved Falcons. And they've accomplished greater things in two, since 2010 than in the history of their franchise. Had back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back winning seasons for the first time. Lost in the NFC Championship game. Y'all still crooked. Bring the left side down. Other side. Whoa! A little bit more. Good. It's kind of swinging on me. That might be all right. They've accomplished more because they had a vision set in front of them that said no matter how tired you get, no matter how much pain you're in, no matter how many points we're down, we're going to rise up to the occasion. They've won more last second ball games than ever. Well, I believe why God spoke this in my heart to speak to Covenant Connections churches. It's time for us to rise up. Amen. You know, they say when you go when you leave this earth, when you go to heaven, hopefully. Some of us. When we go to heaven, we can't take things from this earth with us, right? Can't take your cars, can't take your house, can't take your money. Do you know what I think? 
would be worse to leave on this earth more than money, more than houses, more than cars. See, you work and you give your life and you give your attention to buy more, better houses, better cars, better this, better that, better this. You know what I think would be more detrimental of you leaving here on this earth? Potential. One of the worst things, a great historian quoted, one of the worst things you can do is be at the right place at the right time and not seize the moment. You know what that means? Be at the right place at the right time. Don't use the potential in you to affect your situation or the lives of those around you. There's so much potential in this house. So much potential. A couple of weeks ago we talked about revelation and how important it is that we have revelation from God. We need revelation. Revelation is wisdom. Wisdom into the plan and purpose of God for your life. You need revelation. Revelation is wisdom, but inspiration has to coincide with revelation. Now when we think of inspiration, we think of of a feeling we get that motivates us to do something. book of Job chapter 32 Job is arguing how many know the story of Job Job was a perfect man in in the eyes of God he was a a right man, a just man and the Bible says that that Satan was roaming the earth seeking whom he may devour and he comes to God and God says Job won't curse me Job won't Job loves me Amen goes to him and God takes His hedge of protection down and the enemy kills his kids and takes all of his cattle and all of his animals and burns his kids' house down and takes everything he had, strikes him with balls and made him very bad sick. The Bible says, but through all that, Job never sinned. Job's wife come to him and said, why don't you just curse God and die? Job said, you speak like a foolish woman. You speak like a foolish woman. On in the book of Job, three of Job's best friends come to him and try to justify why he's going through what he's going through. That's your first mistake. When we try to justify our situations by natural means, you're going to get in trouble. Some things you will not be able to explain. Those things just happen. Things just happen. Amen? Then Job makes a big mistake and tries to justify himself by his works. Go read the book. It's it's amazing. He tries to justify himself by his works. Because they were saying, surely you've done something wrong for the wrath of God to come upon you. It wasn't God's wrath. It was the devil. The Bible says the thief come not but to kill, steal, and destroy. God come to give you life and give it to you more abundantly. Amen? You better know who your enemy is and your enemy's not God. He's your daddy. He's on your side. So Job began to justify himself by his works. No, I go to church every Sunday. No, I lead a small group. No, I'm on the prayer and altar worker team at church. So I'm holy because what I do. Nothing you do makes you holy. You're holy because what Christ did. That's the only way you're holy. And so here sits Job and his three friends arguing. Right? There's a little guy sitting sitting outside. He's a, he's a young guy. His name's Elihu. And he's sitting there and he's watching this go on. The three friends accusing their brother of sin. And then their brother trying to justify himself by his works. And he just sat there and sat there and sat there. Because he's a young man and you don't disrespect. See, this was the time when we knew about respect. 
You don't engage in a conversation with men that are older than you that's disrespectful. And he sat there and he listened to him and listened to him and listened to him and listened to him. Until, bring me my Bible if you will, Pastor. Just, I just want to read this to you because I'm not going to preach to you. I know it's, uh, the hour is getting upon us, but I want to, I want to read you. He sits there and something begins to boil over into him. And, and he says to him, he said, look, I'm go, I, I can't stand this any longer. I, I can't stand you guys doing church any longer. I know you're older than I am. I know you're wiser than I am. But I can't take this anymore. And he says in Job... 32 verse 8. I don't know if you can pull that up, Miss Susan. He says, I, I, I know that I'm young and you guys are old and I should be afraid and not say anything in verse 6. And he says, and then the, he said, but now's the time that, that I should speak. And listen to what he says, very profound. He says, but there is a spirit in a man. He said, I know I, I don't have the right to say anything to you, but there's something in me that will not allow me to stay silent any longer. I know by all means I should quit and throw in the towel, but there is a spirit in a man. That word spirit is, is the life of God. I'm here to tell you, I, I know you may be going through some things. I know you may have lost your job. I know your kids may be acting crazy. Whatever you're going through. But I believe today is the day where you realize there's still something on the inside of you. Paul told Timothy, his spiritual son, like this, Stir up the gifts on the inside of you that were imparted to you by the laying on of hands and prophecy. There's something in you that can fight this fight and make you the victor. He said, I know I don't have the right to say anything, but there's something in me that will not let me stay silent. Dear God, Covenant Connections Church, please get a hold of this. There is something in you that will not allow you to be a church goer and be happy anymore. Don't leave potential on this earth. But there is a spirit in a man. Watch this. And the inspiration of the Almighty God gives him understanding. That word inspiration means the explosive breath of God. It's the same word used when the Bible says that God formed man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils. That word breathe is the same word here as inspiration. He says, when you don't know what to do and you don't have a right to say anything or do anything, when you've messed it up, made mistakes, and you have no right to say anything. There's still a spirit on the inside of you. There's still something inside of you that qualifies you to open your mouth. And he said, the inspiration, the breath, of the Almighty God brings you understanding. Revelation brings you wisdom. But wisdom without understanding is little good. What is good if I know all the books of the world? I can solve every math problem known to man. I'm so full of wisdom, but I don't understand how to implement it into my life. What good is the wisdom? Why 
do we come to church? Why do we read the Bible? Why do we pray? Why do we seek the face of God? It's not just to get wisdom. We need understanding. Okay, God, I am a Christian. That's revelation. But now, what do I do? I need understanding. I need the inspiration of God. Are you here? I need the breath of God. Can I take you a little step further? And I, I, I'm not preaching to you. I promised you I wouldn't preach a sermon today. I'm not preaching. I'm just talking. Because there's a spirit inside of you. And some of you it's laid dormant for years. I've come this morning on a mandate from the Holy Spirit. To breathe inspiration into you. Jesus was about to go up to heaven. He, he already died. He rose again. He visits with his twelve. The Bible says he did something very peculiar. Now this was, this was one of the last things that Jesus did. How many know one of the last things you do is the most important things you do? The last words you speak are the most important words you'll ever speak. So many times the last words we speak are, I wish I would have. We don't want to say that. We want to be able to say like Paul, I've run my race. i finished my course. Amen. Jesus is leaving His disciples. The last act on earth is so crucial. Would you agree? He draws his twelve to him and he says, I speak the peace of the Father on you. I speak peace on you. And then he did something. The Bible says he brought them to him and he breathed on them. And said, receive you the Holy Spirit. Same word. Same act you know what he did he said I'm leaving I'm not going to be here with you in this flesh he said I've got to do something very important and he inspired them <sighs> receive the Holy Spirit now what is the Holy Spirit Jesus said I'll not leave you comfortless I'm going to go to the Father and I'm going to pray that He send you the Comforter. What will the Comforter do? Make you, make you shake in church? Make you fall on the floor? Make you speak in tongues? Make you prophesy? He didn't say any of that. I lost you right then. He said, I'm going to send you the Comforter. He's the Spirit of Truth. And He's going to lead you and guide you. How do you lead and guide somebody? By giving them understanding. He'll lead you and guide you into all truth. Before the shaking, before the falling out, before the gifts, we need truth. Truth comes from understanding. Understanding comes from the breath of God. Why does the enemy fight services like this morning? Because he does not want you to be inspired. He does not want you to get into the face of God and receive. That's why you wake up on Sunday morning and go, I just don't believe I'll go to church today. You don't wake up for work and go, ah, I just believe I ain't going to go to work today. Somebody say amen. Amen. Why does the enemy fight you from coming and gathering in the house of God? Because he doesn't want you to receive. <sighs> Amen? Chuck, do me a favor. Go stand over there on the side. Face the wall. He can't see me. I take this microphone down. He can't hear me. Amen? Face the wall. Can you feel this? Do you feel that? Chuck, be honest. We're not talking spiritually here. 
Can you feel this? Still. How about this? Still can't feel it. How about now? You feel that? How about now? What changed? Thank you. What changed? The distance between he and I. Oh, I just felt the Holy Ghost. He didn't change. His position didn't change. I didn't change. And I kept, I was blowing the same way. But the distance between he and I had to change. And I'm hearing the Lord say to Covenant Connections Church, the distance between you and I has to change. I'm blowing. I'm trying to inspire you. I'm trying to bring understanding. Why have I lost my job? Why has my husband run out? Why are my kids doing this? And God's blowing. You can't feel Him because you're all the way over there. And we need to get into the lap of God. We need to get back into the face of God where we can feel His inspiration. That doesn't come from revelation. It only comes from the breath of God. We need to be close enough to the Father so when He says, we feel it. Do you understand? So many things try to get between us and Him and to push us away from Him. God's calling us back to His lap. Do you understand? Mark, you understand? Hallelujah. You understand, cuz? God is not satisfied with you on the playground playing all the time. Got home last night. My wife's birthday was yesterday, and of course, I screwed up again. Allowed my time to get away from me. Because your time doesn't tell you what to do. You should tell your time what to do, right? And the kids were out playing all day. And, and I got Stephanie a gift, you know. And I thought I did a good job. Because I got her a, an, an outfit, a gift that she loves. You love the outfit? I did good. I got her the right Valentine's gift and the right birthday gift this year. Never happened in 18 years. I mean, I did good. did good. But I was gone all day. And I got home last night and I looked at my wife and I saw the hurt on her face. And I asked her, I said, where are the kids? She said, they've been gone outside all day. You've been gone all day. See, I thought I showed her my love with the gift. She doesn't want the gift. She wants my time. And you can ask her, usually when I lay down and go to sleep, I'm out. She come laid down last night and and I kept telling her, Honey, I'm sorry. I failed you. I'm sorry, baby. And she goes, Honey, it's all right." I'd roll over for a minute. I'd roll back over. I'd say, Baby, you don't understand. I'll make it up to you. Didn't I, baby? I said, Baby, I'll make it up to you. I'll, I'll make it up to you. I'll take you to... I'll take you to Florida, I'll take you to Hawaii, I'll buy you a car, whatever it is. And at that moment I realized, David, you can't make it up because one thing you never get back is time. And that's part of the reason I was up all night, because I knew I failed her. 
the one woman I don't want to fail in my life, and I failed her. I thought my intentions were good. You understand what I'm saying? I wonder how many of us as Christians, we think we're doing the right thing. We're trying to justify ourselves by our works. When God does, is, He's not interested in you talking right or looking right or acting right. He wants your time. He wants you to be able to cut off the TV, crawl up in His lap, and not want anything. And it's in those moments where He says, And understanding comes. Because it's the inspiration of God. There's a spirit in you. It's the likeness of God. And the inspiration, the breath of God brings you understanding. You want to know why things are going the way they're going? Crawl up in daddy's lap. Don't let people be the first ones you go to to answer your questions of why. Let daddy be the first one. And you know the good thing about daddy, you don't have to say the right things. Do the right things. You don't have to buy the right gifts. Just being with him. Are you getting what I'm saying? I know I'm not preaching, but this is good. God's calling us. And here's the good thing about it, Mike. We're worthy for Him to allow us to sit in His lap. You're worthy. Amen? So we need revelation. Thank God for re revelation. Allison. Remember when I used to call you April? Was it April I used to call you? I called her April for about three years. Huh? Four, five. You shut your mouth. You have that ability to breathe life into people, inspiration into people. When you sing, the breath of God comes through you and brings life. I'll never forget when Pastor Jerry was gone this summer. the life you and, and Becca and, and this team breathed into this church. Words will never be able to express. Every one of you standing on this stage you are our inspiration. You are our breath. Don't let the enemy get between you. Don't let don't don't crawl up in his lap every day. You hear me, Ben? I'm jealous of you because you're you're a favorite of the Father. God likes everybody, but he really, really, really he loves everybody, but he really, really likes you. He understands you, he gets you. Most people don't get you. God gets you. And I want to tell you, there's one that's been out for five weeks. Every one of y'all need to be on the phone with him today. Amen? Y'all know who I'm talking about. The enemy can't have him. We cancel every assignment in Jesus' name. We cancel every assignment against, in Jesus' name against his life and his family in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Inspiration. The breath of God. Revelations, the wisdom of God. Inspirations, the breath of God. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't it just... You just kind of, you know how you do when you eat too much? 
me and Cologne know. Everybody else don't know. You just kind of like, uh, just want to go lay down. You fool, buddy. That's the way church should be, amen. I love you. I love you. I love you. You got breath on the inside of you. That baby already has a destiny, already has a call. Don't let the enemy bring fear into your mind that something's going to be wrong with this baby or something's going to happen. The hand of God, I I see Him laying it on, on your stomach right now. Mama, lay your hands on her belly. Father, we speak protection over that child in the name of Jesus. It will fulfill its destiny, its call. No weapon formed against it shall be able to prosper. Even now, from his mother's womb, fill this baby with the Holy Ghost, with the breath and the inspiration of God. Mama, when you come to this country, you didn't know that you were delivering a whole nation. There's a nation in you and in your family. See, she had to to run through ditches and hide in ditches and look down the barrel of guns to get to America. But now her family's enjoying the freedom that... You ought to hear her story sometime. She was in the army. What was it, Hunt? Where was it? Nicaragua. She had a baby girl, Lizette. She wanted something better for her. She paid the price, and now she's got a whole generation that's free, born free. Boy, if that's not the gospel, I don't know what is right there. Amen. Amen. God is good. I'm through. Do you feel good today? I love you. I thank God for His Spirit. Miss Lou, can you come? We've had a little misunderstanding about our conference. I didn't know this. We're having a How to Relate conference. And there, and there are some things that Miss Lou has, wants to address today and I want her to address because I feel like this conference can be a huge victory for our church. Amen? It's How, how much is it? And I'm going to let you talk, but just $65 for a couple. And we're bringing in some, some, some great women of God, full of wisdom, full of understanding. And so, you know, it costs... And so that, that's how they, they, they make their living and feed their family. They do conferences like this. Christian counselors, certified Christian counselors. Now, and I'm going to let you address it. I started to address some things. I'm going to let her address it. If the money's an issue, don't let it be an issue. I'm telling you, God, God is, is moving in our church. If you're a guest in this building, you need a good church home. You need to hook up with us. We're not a perfect church, but we got a perfect God. And as long as He's perfect, we're okay. Amen. Let her l- listen to what she's got to say uh, uh, real quick. We're going to take up the offering. And then we're going to be able to go home and take a nap. Somebody say amen. Good morning. So the conference is called How to Relate. And it's not just about marriage. It's about relating to anybody. So you don't have to be married. You, you can just be in a relationship or... Maybe you just want to be able to relate to your neighbors, to your coworkers, and we're going to be tra- get some great training on relational skills, how to handle conflict, how to communicate your feelings, and honestly, how to have a good fight. In other words, a fight that brings reconciliation at the end. Um, my husband and I have been to this conference, and we're thrilled to go to it again and pay for it again because it really was worth it, especially when you have teenagers. We have teenagers in... That's probably where we really need to, the better relational skills. I really want to, you would encourage you, if you thought the conference, if you had to attend because your marriage was in trouble, this is more like, it's more like just getting a tune-up. You, 
You take your car and you get your oil changed every 3,000 miles. This is like that. You're just going to make sure that your relationship runs smoothly, that it glides along, and that it, that it will have an extended life. So we'll be out at the table today. If you want to see me, we will have child care if that's an issue. So come see me out at the table, and I'll answer all your questions. Amen. Thank you, Miss Lou. So it's for everybody. We all need to know how to relate, amen? I want you to prepare your tithes and offerings. If you need a white envelope, just raise your hand. Our host team would love to serve you. As they do step, would you come just for a minute, please? Not only in, in her old age is she getting prettier, but she's getting taller, and I just can't stand it. I mean, who wants a woman taller than they are? You shut your mouth. When she takes off her shoes, she's about four inches shorter than I am. So, beautiful. I love you. Pastor Jerry, let her rip. Y'all sing. Amen. Glory to God. God's good, but that was a highlight of my moment, my morning. Amen. Amen. I love that woman. She is 39 years old. Now, after next year, I won't be able to tell you how old she is because it stops, but she's still in her 30s right now, and she is older than I am. Just want everybody to know that. Amen. She forever will always be older than me. Just so everybody knows that. Amen. If you're a guest in the building, there's a guest card in front of you. Please fill that out. Right now, after service, we have a reception for you. Some drinks and some, some little doodads, finger foods. Time for you to meet some of our leaders, some of our staff. It's in the guest reception room. Go towards the restrooms. You'll see a big sign. Bring that. We got a free gift for you. Amen. You ready to make our proclamation? And then we're going to go out singing. Can we go out singing? What we want to sing? I want to do some of them old songs, but I know that we hadn't done them in so long, and I don't know if y'all will remember them. I want something fast. Something celebratory. Talking about, I said that. Something where the Lord receive toda la gloria. Y'all can't, see if you don't speak Spanish, you can't get that. That's just for us Spanish speaking people. Y'all aren't in that. Amen. God's good. Let's go. Stand to your feet and let's make this proclamation. Amen. It begins with our mission statement. You ready? Let's proclaim it today. Things are going to break off your finances in Jesus' name. We are the voice and hand of encouragement, seeing lives change through hope, comfort, and instruction. We receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses.
My whole family is saved, baptized in the Holy Ghost, and walking with God. I am blessed going in. I am blessed going out. All that I do is prospering. In the name of Jesus, shout amen. You're dismissed. Bring your tithes, your offerings. Lay it on the altar. You're blessed. Have a great week. No midweek experience this Wednesday. We moved it to next Wednesday, the 27th. So small groups this Wednesday. Midweek experience next Wednesday, the 27th.